Warm greetings from Creative Hub Tallinn. This is a webinar organized by Education Nation, which is an Estonian initiative to share our educational knowledge experience with the world. Education Nation provides Estonian education best practices to the world and is consulting, training, digital solutions and much more. During this seminar, we will try to find answers and share tips on how to organize cooperation between schools and the private sector, how to empower fortuners and make guidelines and support available fast on the state level. For more information, go to Facebook and find our page, Education Nation and group named Remote Learning Education Nation. Among our five speakers today, we wait for your participants as well. For asking your questions, please head over to Education Nation YouTube channel or Facebook Live and post your question in the comments section there. Let's meet our speakers today. Mart Leidmetz is the Secretary, uh, Secretary General of the Ministry of Education and Research of Estonia from January 2019. Previously, he has been a member on the board of the Foundation in Nova and served as the Deputy Secretary General of General Education at the Ministry of Education and Research of Estonia. Hello, Mart. And welcome to join us this evening. Christel Rillo is the head of digital education at the Ministry of Education and Research of Estonia. She coordinates and creates synergies for the development of digital skills and competencies at all levels in Estonia. Hello, Christel. Birgit Lau is CEO of Foundation Innova, which is an education competence center that coordinates and promotes general and uh, vocational education activities. Also, she is one of the main spokespersons of Education Nation, which provides Estonian education best practices to the world, consulting, training, and is also the reason why we are here in live. Hello, Bir Birgit. Hello. Tanel Keres has a background in the public sector in the field of finance and education. The last three and a half years he has been acting as the head of eCall, which is the owner and administrator of the school management system eSchool in Estonia. Hello, Tanel. Hello. And welcome to join us this evening. And our fifth speaker to join is Antti Rammo, the founder and CEO of StarCloud, the company developing OPIC. .ee. Antti has been working in the educational content industry for the last 17 years. OPIC has been one of the leading digital learning environments used by most schools in Estonia. We will learn more about OPIC, but first of all, Antti, hello. Hello, it's nice to be here. Each speaker will have time for their presentations and we will have some discussion here as well. And after that, we will also have a Q&A session. So for those who are watching us, don't hesitate to put your question on the web and this gives us a topic to talk. We also have some journalists joining us this evening. They will also have the opportunity to ask questions. Our first speaker, Mart Leibmetz. Mart, can you give us an insight of how Estonia managed to organize distance learning? Yes, uh, thank you and uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, it looks like Estonia has been preparing for that kind of crisis for already 25 years, as we have 99% of our uh, public services online. We do hope that after this crisis, maybe 100% will be online. And uh, after the day when Estonia was somehow locked down, as most of our countries, uh, where life didn't stop, uh, people could work from their homes, and even education system moved to distance learning. 100%. Uh, some parents, especially, claim that it's not 100%, but it's 120%, because uh, now they can see how much uh, time and effort it uh, really needs to educate our younger generations, but after the first days of some confusion, uh, the first month has been fairly successful, and now when we are talking that maybe we'll end this uh, period with distance learning, where our voices which are saying that uh, we shouldn't do it, we can continue with it until the end of uh, school year at least, maybe even longer. 
Uh, but of, of, okay. What uh, were the main factors? And uh, go ahead. We would like to hear hear about the details you are you are sharing with us this evening. And and what were the main things to take into con con consideration and how to get it forward from here so to to help our listeners globally also to learn from our experience. Please go ahead, Mart. Yes. Thank you, and, uh, and, and uh, Estonia is quite a small country, as I already told, uh, digitally uh, very developed, and uh, and uh, what's behind our story? Uh, when we learn from those physical premises or obey one month ago, we could see that uh, really strong coordination between all stakeholders was needed because the school owners are usually local municipalities they are responsible for infrastructure of course uh, for well-trained uh, educators and uh, even with universities uh, and our competence centers uh, like uh, innova and uh, information technology agency they were uh, ready from first day to support all the teachers and even parents uh, in this new situation. Of course, uh, what has been uh, a strong part of our education system, as Estonian education system is the best in Europe and among the best in, uh, in the world, is that our teachers and schools are very autonomous. So they didn't have to wait some kind of instructions uh, from a ministry, they could start with their own uh, methods, their own approach uh, to new new situation. And uh, I hope that it will still, uh, and it will be continuing that way. What is important, of course, that uh, centrally we have been um, developing uh, this uh, digital ecosystem for a very long time. Estonia was the first country which introduced uh, digital competence as one of the generic competences already in 2014. So we have been preparing and now we can see the results. Of course, we can measure them uh, later uh, when we can compare the learning period before that year with this year. But I think that at least it has been very successful. And of course, uh, maybe even if we say that the content of uh, uh, teaching, learning, and materials is more important for, than the infrastructure, infrastructure, but even the companies which are present here, uh, all the computers needed, which were provided in some cases for uh, the children who didn't have uh, with, uh, help from. Uh, big and smaller organizations and private uh, institutions, we could see that all this infrastructure was actually, an ecosystem was working uh, very well together. So, to be very short in my introduction, if you are already in this kind of situation, you have to take the best out of everything. You have to map the topics which are which have to be addressed, supported. Uh, you have to share the best practices as much as possible. Every teacher, parent, uh, even student, they have to be open and they really have to ask. We, can, we have seen that 99% uh, of the students are actually very active in distance learning, but those half a percent, one percent of people, the students which were not very active early at all so are not in, uh, active in distance learning. So uh, how to find them and how to address them is another question. But the most important feature what has been behind this success is cooperation. So I hope that it will really continue that way. And uh, thank you for me. Thank you, Marit. Uh... For all of those who are watching, go to Facebook and find our page, Education Nation, 
group named Remote Learning Education Nation or send us a letter hello at educationnation.ee. This is also an opportunity to get in touch with us. Crystal, Estonia is now known for its digital reputation. Was that something that now proved to be helpful in organizing the distance learning and in what way? Your microphone is still muted. Let's try to unmute it once again. Yes, in this... Uh, Okay, we can try to get the mute off. Uh, let's continue with uh, Birgit, the CEO of Foundation in Nova. Uh, Birgit, uh, the way we are working together with the government and, uh, and with private sector, uh, how does that uh, work in Estonia in terms of, of, of why do we need and what is the role and importance of the private sector? Can, can you give a short comment and then we move back to Crystal? Uh, yes, it's a good question. As Mart mentioned, Estonia is a very small country. Thus, uh, it would be evident that we have resources to fulfill all the demands and needs from the student uh, and school's perspective. But uh, fortunately, we have a very active uh, uh, microservice uh, like, um, offer from the edtech side. So we are quite aware that we can't solve all the little problems in education, all the massive problems, as uh, Daniel or Antti will, will tell you later. So I think uh, in the future, if we aim uh, for personalized uh, individual learning and teaching, then it's uh, like by all means necessary that we take on board uh, the private sector. And uh, I think generally we in Estonia can say that we are very lucky in this uh, way uh, because we have good partners in the private sector and the cooperation is working out very well. Is that true? Yes, it's true. And I think uh, the number of raising companies in this field is, uh, is a clear sign for that. So um, we have the dedication, we have motivated people, and actually the results uh, are um, good evidence for that, that the services are working. So they are not just creating, created to have uh, fun or short-term solutions. So it's a long-term uh, constant cooperation. Thank you. Crystal, uh, something that proved to be helpful in organizing distance learning certainly is our experience with our digital way the Estonia exists. Um, how that helped us to quickly get used to the new reality? Thank you for the question and sorry about the technical deviation. As always, uh, this kind of restarting helps, but in our situation, uh, actually everything that we had done so far helped a lot. And uh, and uh, to look back, when we started to look back what we actually did uh, differently or more that helped us to cope with the current situation, uh, we realized that uh, since 2014, since our new strategy uh, was taken into force, a lot uh, of right things have happened. So what we did uh, with our strategy, presentation? Yes. yes, go ahead. And uh, uh, as I said, that we had this digital transformation in our education strategy already since 2014. So uh, what we said as uh, important aspects in there was uh, was that first we considered a priority the digital skills. And, uh, and by digital skills, I don't mean a computer literacy, but uh, I mean uh, more than computer literacy. When we first started with the digital skills or talking about the digital skills, then a lot of uh, schools and teachers asked what will, be, uh, what will be necessary now because computer literacy was already there. And schools uh, taught children computer and 
uh, I will come back to this later. And secondly, the second pillar uh, we considered necessary was uh, empowering education with uh, learning uh, content. Uh, with learning content and contemporary methodology. So this was the aspect to take into, con into consideration because when we talk about digital tools, then also the method and learning design uh, is different than the one in the traditional learning and teaching. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have paid a lot of attention to uh, uh, internet connection, uh, for safe internet connection, different Wi-Fi networks within schools, but as well uh, the devices within schools. What we realized with this experience it, it was that even um, when we had paid a lot of attention to uh, uh, updating or upgrading uh, a school's infrastructure, digital infrastructure, uh, the weaker spots uh, uh, became evident regarding homes. Because even we, we knew that our students have digital devices and they have internet connectivity at homes. But uh, then we found out how many students don't have computers. So they have only their smartphones or tablets. But uh, occasionally it's not sufficient for doing homework or schoolwork. Uh, this was something that uh, uh, we realized very fast. And what happened uh, was that uh, firstly, the schools uh, borrowed very quickly uh, necessary equipment to the families who were in need. Secondly, also the civil society initiatives, the third sector uh, initiated one uh, program to help the ones in need. So it found very fast uh, sufficient solutions. Uh, so, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, what was needed for this distance learning, then for sure it was digital pedagogy. What helped us a lot was that in Estonia, schools and teachers are very uh, are autonomous. They are uh, free to choose their own tools. Uh, it's in the national curriculum what kind of learning outcomes need to be achieved. But how those will be achieved, it's up to the school and uh, teachers. So in a normal situation, uh, teachers are already used to choosing their own tools and adapting to uh, uh, new circumstances. So it helped us a lot in the current situation that uh, teachers already were used to uh, finding some other ways and, um, uh, and learning uh, how to cope uh, with new situations. Secondly, what we have done is upskilling support to teachers because uh, a, a lot uh, is talked about the teachers' digital skills, but um, how it's actually supported is very, very important. If one could do just training programs available for teachers, but this is not sufficient. What we have done here is, of course, this kind of central training programs, free uh, training programs for teachers, but as well, school uh, tailor-made for schools or school-based uh, training programs. Another uh, measure that has been remarkably useful uh, is this kind of mentorship uh, practice in our schools. That uh, uh, not in every school, but in a lot of schools, there is an educational technologist who is a digitally more competent uh, teacher supporting other teachers how to employ digital tools. Uh, and uh, thirdly, the teachers' community communities. Sorry, too fast painting pictures. Uh, uh, the teachers' communities that for uh, some time already, the teachers' uh, communities like math teachers, uh, uh, language learning teachers, and so on, uh, they have uh, uh, they have contributed to uh, reviewing and producing digital learning materials. They were again familiar with uh, uh, specific tools necessary or to the tar targeting their own subjects. So uh, also different uh, specialists were on board. And these needed to be supported by e-services uh, uh, like school management information system that was essential tool for sharing information between homes and schools. Uh, digital learning content available, uh, that is again something that we already introduced in 2015, since when uh, all textbooks had to be made available also in digital format. 
So uh, the digital textbooks or digital learning materials, like we have our partner here uh, from uh, representing Gopic platform. Uh, these, these materials were available for all schools, despite their location, despite their owner, ownership, uh, wherever there is. And when we talk about uh, the digital uh, competence of students, uh, then of course, uh, this is something that we get back a lot these days from teachers that even though they were somehow tired already within uh, last, through last years that uh, we talk too much about digital competence, then they are very grateful today that uh, the students have the skills. They have the skills to cope with the distance learning uh, and e-learning within the distance learning. So uh, digital competence is one of the key competencies that we have in our national curriculum. And I have already pointed out some practical tips that were very useful for us. Uh, of course, uh, reliable digital infrastructure that if you don't have the internet connection, then uh, doing something um, so something digital in virtual environment could, uh, could be difficult. Of course, there is obstacles if you have the connectivity, you need to know also what kind of contract agreements are there be between the teachers and uh, internet service providers and so, so on. So it gets very intense when the whole country, not only the students are uh, working and learning from the students, but also the parents. So uh, it's a challenge to every infrastructure. Empowering the front runners is that uh, uh, we very well knew who are the front runners who could support others and we empowered them. Uh, giving guidelines and support available fast, even the guidelines saying that uh, doing something uh, that you prefer is very good. So just uh, guidelines, very clear guidelines uh, to the school. Uh, we also uh, asked very uh, much about uh, feedback, uh, but uh, we just didn't ask about feedback, but we also uh, Take the feed, took the feedback and reacted to that. So there is no point of asking feedback and do nothing about it. So this was our uh, input from schools that what we need to support them uh, uh, furthermore. Uh, cooperation with schools and private sector is something that is uh, extremely helpful that even if some services are not operational, uh, uh, then uh, the schools and e-services uh, uh, communicate very fast and fast and uh, everything uh, will work out fine. And what is very uh, elegant in our system that I have replied a lot of times to different uh, ones uh, interested in our experience is that our key factor is that we have small, reliable e-services. We have not built one monstrum to work on. So it's also made, it also has made service uh, more reliable and trustworthy. And of course, when we uh, we are not we are not supposed to look at the current situation only, but also look uh, towards the future. Uh, then uh, we have also the startup ecosystem and ecosystem to support um, the rise of new services in place. So if there is any gap at this point that we see that is not filled and could should be filled, then there will be a service uh, to uh, to support schools in this gap. But uh, this would be, at this point, all from me. Looking forward to the questions. Thank you, Kristel. Um, Birgit, uh, how does Innova manage to support all the schools in Estonia? You have built up a service and, and the structure that is brilliant and probably a good example also to the world. Uh, yes, uh, as Christian uh, mentioned, that uh, it's very good to be prepared for the crisis, just hoping that the crisis would never hit you. Uh, but of course, when it does, and when your system is extremely autonomous, uh, as uh, Estonian education system is, then the good question is how do you reach to the schools and how do you get the feedback? So for that, we have uh, used our national system uh, I have done a nice visualization of it. Uh, let's see if we can have it. And uh, and we we use it to collect uh, direct information very fastly from local municipalities and also from uh, each kind of educational institutions. Uh, 
the network itself is called uh, Realedia. You can show the slide. Or the Pathfinders uh, network. Uh, and uh, we are present in each uh, municipality in a sense that it's 12 points, uh, connection points in, uh, in bigger county areas. And we reach out over uh, over 1,000 educational establishments in Estonia. Uh, the network itself uh, was originally used and is still for uh, providing uh, speech therapy for pupils, for providing um, psychological help for students, for providing special educational uh, teacher support for students. And the last one I mentioned has been extremely handy in distance learning conditions because uh, in a way uh, we all are and even parents are uh, in, a, in a special situation at the moment uh, trying to cope at home being a parent and a teacher. So just to move on, uh, this service has been so far and is uh, for free for students. Uh, and, uh, and it's for the students or pupils' best interest. Uh, the support is given not only directly to the pupils, but also for teachers, how to cope in difficult situations, whether you have the special educational need present in a classroom or nowadays behind the screen. Uh, we also provide help for school collective because um, some teachers might be, as Crystal said, very advanced in technological uh, environment. Some might still do some steps. And uh, since we have quite a big share of uh, students with special needs included in uh, everyday schooling system, then those children are now at home. So how do we cope with that? also via digital devices. So here we are present with our services as well. Uh, just to move on, uh, to sp speak about, uh, so how do you actually run the system, which is extremely autonomous, but still you have to uh, provide services for the, for the or, and guidance for the pupils and teachers. Um, we do the guidelines, as Crystal mentioned, and those are actually only good advices, uh, good uh, suggestions, how to, uh, for example, uh, talk to the children about the coronaviruses, what kind of teaching methods to use, uh, what kind of uh, uh, counselling methods to use, uh, tips for parents not to take over the teaching, for example, uh, how to support your child to be an independent uh, stu uh, student, not not how to take over the teaching at home for the teacher. So we aim for tips and guidances and counseling. Uh, as a state or as a state agency, we can't demand uh, schools to do something. So it all comes down to the good relations. Uh, we have uh, done quite a lot of uh, video um, series uh, just to have like 10 minutes uh, tips how to run or how to solve one problem. And our Educational Technology uh, Foundation, HITSA, has been very active in a way that gathering the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, experiences and, uh, and uh, knowledge to share. So those, have, those uh, videos, webinars are alive and, uh, and there are tens of them, even hundreds. I know that some uh, information is asked uh, how Estonia uh, manages or um, aims to end the school year because how we can be sure that distance learning actually brings the right outcomes that are usually expected at the end of the school year. Uh, well, for that, uh, we the government has proposed that uh, this year uh, the uh, finishing exams for ninth graders or lower secondary um, uh, pupils will be uh, abolished. So the proposal is not to do them. And for the secondary uh, graduates, so those who are going to go to the universities or vocational education or for job market, uh, they have to do two national exams. So in, mother, in Estonian and mathematics or Estonian as a foreign language. Uh, this is the proposal 
uh, if and when we can end the lockdown situation by mid-May. If not, then we'll go step by step. Uh, from my side, I would say that uh, in crisis, uh, as we heard, we have to take one step uh, at a time. And in Estonia, it all comes down to the headmaster of the school. So if the headmaster doesn't take a one step at a at time or takes it back, then of course uh, the school system feels it. But so far, as we heard from the constant feedback, we have done the right steps at the right time. So thank you from my side. Thank you, Birgit, as well. Uh, part of the steps, as you mentioned before, has also been a good cooperation between the public and private sector. Tunnel, after three and a five years, uh, a school is coming more and more popular. Uh, these times, I assume, have caused even uh, the need for e-school to grow and the users have become more and more. How are you handling that? Hmm. Yes, well, recent uh, weeks or recent months has been a quite interesting time for us, yes, for sure. And maybe talking, maybe talking about numbers, the, so um, let's say that, that uh, the, the number of uh, students in our platform has risen for 34%. Uh, so it's a huge number. So we can say that um, it definitely has helped to organize the users in the system. Uh, this until mm, month ago, all the students probably used, or these students, the new students used their parents' accounts. So now everything is um, well organized and uh, we are also teaching here the digital hygiene. So everyone has to have their own their own um, user account. And maybe this is a good um, point to, to move forward and uh, talk some words about EGOL, what it is. So EGOL, uh, it's a school management system, uh, which is already uh, um, started uh, several years ago, already 17 years ago, so that uh, we have been active uh, for quite a quite a while, and uh, there hasn't been any day that we haven't improved ourselves. And uh, if teachers have some new ideas, we definitely go and and uh, try to try to help them with those. And um, we have also a good connection with uh, different uh, municipalities, and here are some good words from, from uh, Tallinn city, where they say many, many good words uh, about uh, what we provide. Uh, so what are the outcomes and, uh, and uh, so that we actually help teachers to, to help their everyday work. And a couple of words about uh, our product, what it, what it is actually, it's a school management system where all the relevant parties, uh, home and school, and also governmental side, is it the local government or central government, can um, be in the same platform. So all the same information is shared with the relevant parties. And uh, maybe the most important thing here is to say that uh, everything that is added into the system, it is added only once. And, uh, and uh, this is how the time will be saved. Um, and here are some most important things that we are most proud of, uh, that uh, teachers actually save their time on administrative tasks. And uh, we have made surveys and it's almost uh, um, what teachers have said is that it's uh, 45 minutes per day even and uh, this is the time that they can actually spend on teaching students and uh, okay maybe the next thing that reducing uh, it has reduced skipping by 30 percent in five years and if we are talking more let's say nine years or ten years uh, the percentage is probably higher maybe even 90 percent 
Okay, today it's not so relevant because everyone is basically skipping the physical lessons and physical classes. But it actually has given a very good result uh, um, in this field as well. And uh, another thing is that parents are involved in the learning process and uh, checking uh, grades and uh, homeworks on a daily basis. And if we are talking um, today's situation, the, the numbers are, are very, very high. So basically students uh, and parents go to the platform in the morning and they basically leave uh, later in the evening. So this has definitely became a, a, a part of uh, everyday life of, for every, every student. And uh, it is available in, in various uh, devices and uh, so everyone can see their, um, find their most uh, suitable, suitable way. Uh, now talking about um, other markets, uh, we are mm, looking forward to, to other countries as well and we have already started some pilots in the African region and also in Japan. So this is definitely an interesting time and uh, we are definitely open for for all all new all new markets for sure um, some words about uh, our strengths and and uh, competitive advantages uh, we believe that these 17 years this is a huge advantage and uh, and uh, during that time we have uh, improved our product a lot and uh, Today, uh, we can see that uh, it is uh, definitely the backbone of, uh, of a school uh, or everyday life, so back, backbone of, of education in that sense, that uh, this is a channel from between home and school. So everything you can uh, school sends to home uh, will be sent over those. Um, channels like uh, like ego for example here and um, maybe uh, some some other words that uh, we are definitely um, trying to to help uh, at this situation helps uh, schools and students to uh, teachers and students to to get uh, the most out of the, this situation, so that uh, all the homeworks, all the lesson descriptions and everything uh, would not be missed at all. And uh, maybe that is the short uh, overview from, from my side. And I would like to say some words about the situation, what has uh, happened uh, now during last month. We see that uh, I, I briefly told you about the uh, increase of uh, users. And uh, this is one thing, but what is actually changed is the way our system is uh, used. Um, students and uh, teachers are using actually much more the features uh, that were not used so much a um, couple of months ago. So let's say using fi sharing files, sending those uh, messages and then communication, this has raised a lot. And, uh, and this is the, the change what we have seen. Uh, also another change what we have seen is that as uh, uh, the usage of our platform was uh, divided uh, this way that in the mornings it was mostly used by teachers, but now and in the afternoons it was mostly used by students and parents. Then uh, now we see the situation where all people or all the users are um, in the platform at the same time and the uh, most highest times are from nine o'clock until 11. And what we just uh, joked with Ainti uh, a while ago uh, was that uh, actually it has, um, let's say, moved one uh, hour later due to the switching to day uh, saving time. So as it was uh, previously nine o'clock, the start of the school day mostly, then now it has moved more to 10 o'clock. So this is what we also see from, from our systems. But yes, uh, we see that uh, things are, are doing great and, and the school is not 
cancelled, it is just remote and the learning process is definitely on. Okay, this is from my side. Uh, thank you, Tanel. We have a question uh, from someone who is watching our webinar from France. Uh, how do you care about the general data protection regulations, GDPR, for students, teachers, call numbers, private mm -hmm. information, etc.? Thank you. Um, this is a good question and I must say that uh, when the GDPR came into act, uh, we also had to go through our, our system. We took, the, took it uh, uh, apart uh, bit by bit and the only thing what we actually had to do was um, just the deleting user. Uh, this feature it was the only thing we had to do actually. All the rest was uh, fine. Okay, there was also some paperwork, but uh, why it was okay was that our system is built this way that everyone can see only those things that are meant for her. And uh, the data is actually owned by school and by, by users so that uh, there is no um, issues regarding data protection law in that sense. So everyone can see only these things that are meant for them, nothing else. That's good, thank you. Ainti, uh, digital uh, educational services have come into a totally new light. Uh, and I, I would say these digital systems have been probably able to help the entire educational system to stay in these circumstances. Uh, can you tell us a bit about more the platform that you're working on and also your insight on on this uh, situation with uh, the distance learning and the uh, support that we can we can provide to the schools also in a normal situation uh, yes absolutely and i think uh, a lot that has been already mentioned here uh, from from colleagues from public and also private sector is that uh, we have uh, these preconditions uh, set to to offer these services and to be able to to uh, continue giving education uh, almost uh, as efficiently as before and i guess we all agree that we take this as a great opportunity to opportunity to digitize even more and and uh, be a winner of, of the situation and uh, being for the last four weeks every day communicating with our teachers pupils uh, the schools also parents uh, i have uh, a very strong and great belief uh, in in our our, our people uh, but um, to be more precise of of uh, what i represent and and what we do and how we contribute to the situation i will uh, make a short introduction to what opic actually is and uh, through through that then you might get a better idea of, of what our, our role in in this uh, situation uh, might be so um, uh, we work with uh, digitized curriculum content um, so if, if we are suddenly at this moment uh, when uh, we can't go to the physical school we can't go to the physical classroom then when we might ask that, okay, how do we do it then? And uh, the answer is is, uh, is quite simply, we do it digitally. Uh, so uh, Tunnel uh, represents uh, a, a school management tool that enables uh, all schools, all pupils, all teachers to have uh, a digital platform uh, with digital identities, uh, with communication uh, features and so on that uh, puts together information all about what is going on in school and who is doing what and when. Uh, so how we step onto that uh, platform is that we provide the educational content. So how the curriculum is delivered. Uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, the learning and teaching, then we want to know that do we, are you learning about triangle or, or are you learning about volcanoes? And, uh, and so far in this uh, analog world, we we uh, understand content as uh, textbooks, as workbooks, and uh, of course, as all the materials the teachers themselves create. And OPIC uh, as a platform works with educational publishers to offer a digitized curriculum service. So uh, in a way, we, our background is in uh, textbooks, workbooks that 
are widely used in, in most education systems, also in Estonia, but we have taken the step further to digitize what curriculum is and then make it a fully digital service. And uh, one other thing, uh, what we see here, uh, always when you do something digitally, you get a lot of data out of it. So I think um, one of the, the, the things that we can already say today is that uh, uh, we can validate through all these digital services that the schools are using very actively what is going on in the system. What is being learned, uh, how much pupils and teachers are engaged in this distance learning and uh, where are they at the moment with, with the topics, uh, with everything. So it's uh, something that uh, opens up the whole system. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's quite an amazing thing to be part of, of that. So just, you know, a step closer to what OPIC is, then for the most uh, people, OPIC is what you see here on the, in the middle of the slide. It's, it's, a, it's a digital learning environment for schools, teachers, pupils and parents. But as I, as I shortly mentioned in the background, it's actually a, a, a content creating tool. It's a content delivery tool for uh, educational publishing industry. So, uh, uh, it's uh, something that enables these traditional businesses uh, who have been doing uh, content for, for 200 years to step into the digital world and together in our uh, platform then offer a fully digital service for the schools. And uh, the third pillar is also what I, I, I briefly mentioned is that how we, uh, with data, how we open up all that what is going on how it is happening to all different stakeholders from from parents to the schools to, to the to the policy makers uh, and and so on and also to businesses as well because it's it's a crucial part of, of how the content is is being created and and what is the motivation uh, then just let's go through a few more slides that tell uh, a little bit about how the service works so this is something that you, you now see something that uh, pupils from Estonia and, uh, and uh, teachers uh, see every day right now. Uh, basically the content, all the books uh, is uh, delivered through a library. And what is uh, maybe interesting here is that uh, we offer the service in a similar way like uh, Spotify and Netflix and all the other uh, loved uh, content services are, are delivered. So for us, the center of the service is not so much the grade and subject-based uh, book, but it's, uh, it's the curriculum itself. So the curriculum becomes a very open and flexible database that is structured very highly as, as we expect from high quality learning materials. But it is also something that you can search from and you can make connection be connections between subjects. And it's, it's uh, 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 for example, the search can be AI assisted for you to make connections between uh, certain topics if you want to go further or you want to go back in the same topic and or you want to see uh, more about uh, volcanoes in, in history or, or geography. So it's uh, something that is uh, living and, and also uh, coming uh, towards the learner and teacher more than these uh, maybe more traditional materials. Uh, so uh, so uh, another example uh, how this learning environment is built around the content. So the, the pupil logs into the system and instead of having a big uh, bookshelf, they have already uh, cur curated content from the teachers of what their homework is, what are the topics they are, are, are learning, and also the feedback immediately is visible for, for the, the pupil when they get to the system. Then for, from the teacher's perspective, it's a teaching and management tool. So if we don't, we are not sitting in the classroom uh, together. So it is all these crucial things that the school enables for me as a teacher to do uh, in the physical room uh, are represented uh, here in, in the digital uh, learning environment. Of course, it is restricted to content and what the system enables, but you know the basics are all there to, to be able to uh, not uh, be physically uh, apparent all the time. And in the center, if it is, is the content, so if we are talking about uh, what we are learning, then we are learning about, you know, everything that the curriculum sets 
uh, us to learn about and we get data from it. So we know that right now this amount of pupils are learning about thermal effect in, in physics and we know how they are doing it, how they are progressing and we can help them on the way. Uh, so this is a, a digital learning environment. And once again about the data, uh, it's uh, data to publishers, the content creators, the schools and to educational leadership and policy makers that makes the, the whole thing come together. Uh, then just a quick view also of what has been going on now in the last weeks. Um, well, the service itself is, is the same, but the intensity of the usage is, is radically changed, as you can see. And I think uh, for many uh, schools uh, uh, or, uh, no, sorry, for many digital learning, learning platform providers, they see a very similar picture if they look at, at their analytics at the moment. So the big change has been in the intensity mostly. So if so far a pupil was digitally learning uh, like uh, in one subject uh, once a week or twice a week, then now they are doing it uh, every day, all the time. So, uh, and uh, we are very proud that our um, service uh, lets them do that. Of course, it's uh, not 100% for everybody, but still it's, it's quite uh, strong. Uh, strong value that that can be used very quickly mm, and of course it comes back to where I started from this would not be possible if we not did not have the infrastructure if we do, did not have this digital identities if we didn't have the strategies and and uh, and uh, the solutions we uh, are, ha are having already the last uh, six uh, years uh, I'm uh, oh, sorry did you want yes, to finish up yes. with something? Well, yes, I, I'm actually getting to the to the end in, in that way and uh, expecting uh, questions. So yeah, we just, have also uh, questions, but just go ahead and sum it up. Of yeah, so just side. this is this is this is the sum up of, of what we do. So we we uh, develop software to to create, distribute, and uh, use the learning digital learning materials. We work with publishers and pri private sector because you can't fly far in in education if you don't have this uh, uh, cooperation and uh, by now in Estonia OPIC is definitely one of the most used content platforms uh, that, that there is. Uh, Ainti, what is the process validation for the new content teachers? This is asked by one of our listeners. Well, it's uh, in the digital uh, area, it's uh, basically the same what uh, the state has set as, as the law for uh, learning materials. They, they must be uh, reviewed. Uh, there are uh, concrete, uh, mm, uh, uh, concrete validation process for the quality of the materials. And in a digital format, it, it, is not, it has not changed. It's the same. What about international opportunities? Uh, are you, if some of our listeners would like to uh, contact and, and use your services in their countries, are you open? Yes, in, in other countries we do basically the same model as in Estonia. We work closely with educational content creators uh, who have this ambition to uh, go really digital um, and uh, also public sector to help uh, to make the right steps. So uh, we are available and uh, and uh, ready to go. What about you, Tanel, uh, in these times? If uh, some of the people watching us from webinar would like to use your services in other countries, like this one person who asked the question from France, uh, are you open? For sure, for sure. And um, maybe the first thing is yes to, to contact that. Let's, let's try and let's do the pilot for sure. We are open. A question about assessments. Have you been able to carry out assessments online? And if yes, how do you guarantee that students are not referring to materials while taking their assessments? Ainti. Mm, well, it's a, I mean, if, if it's a simple question, if, if they are looking at the, the answers from the side at the same moment uh, from, from other uh, web page or something, then for sure, this is something uh, uh, you can't really, um, you know, stop them doing. But I have had many conversations with teachers about that, and actually, 
our teachers say that uh, it's a good thing because they learn when they when they look up the, the answers. Raiva, At the end of the day, we are all uh, learning for ourselves, and I think in Estonian education system, it's uh, it's quite clear that uh, we are not learning just for for the teacher, but we are learning and uh, learning uh, for ourselves. Yeah, that's true. Tanel, did you want to add something? I wanted to add that uh, what we see from our system is that schools are actually changing the grading systems from uh, five, four, three, two to pass and not pass. So this is actually the change that schools are doing uh, at the moment, what we see. Raivo Jurak from Estonian's Teachers Paper has also joined us this evening. Raivo, would you like to ask anything from our speakers today? Raivo, do you hear us? Yeah, I can hear Would you like to ask something? Kas teile mingi küsimus, ma võin tõlkida. All right, thank you. Raivo's questions were all answered uh, by now already. Uh, a few more questions here. Um, one of, uh, well, we talked a little bit about this, but we can refer once again. Uh, how can you guarantee a good uh, workflow uh, between the students and the teachers? Um, I guess uh, the person asking the question means that, okay, these tools are great, but can you give us uh, some practical example of actually leading the learning process uh, with this uh, and taking care of, of the advantages that uh, all the students may have in the school, especially when they are physically far from the teacher? Who would like to give an uh, answer to this? I could try to answer. Yes, Birgit, please um, go ahead. Yes, yes. I think uh, with any kind of assessment, despite of the fact what kind of tool you use, uh, analog or digital, you have to be sure that there is a, a good feedback from the pupil side. But not only, also what we uh, heard from the, from the feedback from students and parents, that actually students uh, seek for the feedback from teacher size as well. So just to make sure that uh, if one doesn't respond, you check as a teacher and uh, that uh, as a teacher, you also need, uh, need to have some kind of uh, online uh, class uh, meetings and uh, just uh, see how the temperature is. Kristel and Mart, uh, from the government perspective, if I may say in this way, uh, to close up our webinar today, what are your uh, sum up thoughts or suggestions to our international listeners after our talk? Maybe Kristel first. What is the one of the major reasons uh, why we actually cope with this in together with the, in this situation is that we trust our schools, that uh, we trust our teachers, and we try to support them as much as we can at this point. This might be not the best time to invent news, but uh, to stick with very good best practices you have had so far. Thank you. Very Mart. good point, I think. I agree. Mart, would you like to say something before we close? Yeah, I think that uh, anytime you have to brave enough to start with all those new uh, steps you have to take anyway. And uh, don't be afraid of the digital world. It helps really, not even in a time of crisis, but all the time. <laughs> Pirgit, uh, as a leader of Innova, uh, is there anything you would like to add to close up our conversation today and then we head up towards the next week? Yeah, I think uh, just to ahead to the future, uh, when these crises are over 
and the educational institutions are open again, I think the crucial question to ask from ourselves, from our teachers, from headmaster, is that uh, when we came from the classroom-based learning and teaching, and very teacher-oriented teaching, then what is the lesson we bring back? Will we go back to where we came from, or we just go ahead with the experiences uh, for having a student-centered learning uh, for the future? So I think those are the questions we should ask or start to ask very soon. This is good lineup to close our seminar today. Thank you for turning in and we hope to see you at our future seminars again. We thank our speakers for sharing their thoughts and experience. Thank you for watching us and we also thank the press to be with us this evening. Our next webinar is taking place on next Thursday, 23rd of April at the same time. Next week we will talk about the remote learning in vocational, educational and schools. Uh, for more info on the future webinars, follow us on social media at Education Nation and join our open Facebook group Remote Learning Education Nation where you can also suggest on topic for the future webinars. This is all from our side today from Creative Hub Tallinn and on behalf of Education Nation we all hope that uh, the crisis will be over soon but we also want to take the lessons that we are learning to do even better in the future. And we can, together. Thank you for watching, take care, stay home, see you next week.